All right, everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure. In this episode, we are going to do some x64 assembly, and we're going to build a stack string and then reference it. And this can be used in shell code, um, and you'll see why I'm going to make some future videos on that. But basically, what we need to do here is we need to put a string on the stack instead of referencing it from like the data segment of the uh, the binary. And the reason why for shell code is because you don't necessarily have access to the data segment and if you're going to inject some code into another process then you need to be able to reference it directly and in a, a position independent fashion. And the stack allows you to do that because the stack um, is always in reference to the area of the code that you're working with. So um, it's it's kind of painfully simple but also complicated at the same time and there's a lot of gotchas and it can be very frustrating and so um, the first thing to note here is that we are using FASM assembler or flat assembler um, there's another one called NASM which is popular there's like Windows has MASM with an M there's like TASM there's a bunch of different assemblers but they basically all do the same thing just the syntax and some of the supports different I like FASM a lot it's simple um, I, I just like this because we don't even need to create like the sections. We can literally just um, code up uh, a raw executable file um, with just like one segment like this or a couple of segments without even having to worry about the sections or anything like that. So it's basically just very easy to to um, like mess with assembly code and then just assemble it and then run it and check it and things like that. So the first thing I want you to to pay attention to here is is that so we're gonna we're we're gonna write a string and this is gonna be the string right here I'll make it as a comment the string is this is a test with a period at the end okay now with this particular syscall that we're using which is the write to standard out as you can see right here these are the codes for that um, if you want to learn more about that um, and by the way we're on we're actually on Ubuntu right now so um, the syscall format is going to be different on Windows and Mac slightly, but the idea is the same. But so what you could do is you could go and Google Linux x64 syscall table, and then you'll see all the different calls you have available. But in this case, we're doing the the syswrite to standard out. Okay. Now what I wanted to draw your attention to is, is that we, we move into EDX or RDX, you could also move to RDX uh, 15, and that's because the length of our string is 15 characters. This is a test with a period at the end, is, is a 15 character string. And what that means is that this syscall does not rely on null termination. So this is not like a C string. We don't need a null terminator here because it just, it just goes by the size of characters and it knows when to stop, okay? so. The interesting thing here, though, is is that that you can mess up on is the order in which these things are pushed, and there's other gotchas too. So I'm going to just kind of cover some of the gotchas, and then what I'm going to do is run this program and show it to you in a debugger, so you can see all this in a in a very visual manner, so you can see exactly what's going on in the stack and exactly why we need to do things we need to do. So, um, but basically, this syscall right here it needs in in R, in RSI, which is the uh, source index, it needs to have a pointer to a string. So it needs to have the address of the first character of the string. So in this case, it needs to have the address of this T right here in memory. Um, and, and that's going to be a, st a stack address because the memory that we're using in this case is the stack, which is why we're doing these pushes here. Um, and you're going to see this in a minute when I switch to the debugger. But what I want you to understand is that we have to push this backwards so that it's read properly. So um, we don't. So if you just wanted to print this is, you wouldn't necessarily have to push it backwards. You could actually, uh, you could push this is up here before a test. But the problem is, is that it's not going to. It's going to read in the opposite direction of the stack, so it will never get to a test. So in order to, to properly print this, we need to push it backwards. So first, we have to push a test. Then we have to push this is. Now, the interesting thing about this is that since we're in x64, we can actually push um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can actually push eight up to eight characters um, per 
per per push or, because it, the word size is 64 bit. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in this case, we're actually using up the entire register. Okay. However, the thing is, is is that and people people uh, they struggle with this all the time at the beginning, and I did too. The thing is, is that you cannot push a test, and you cannot push this is space because these are too long. So, um, you, so you, you can't do this. You can't say push a test, and the reason why is because um, the x64 instruction set architecture um, it doesn't have the ability to push 64 bits directly. Um, it's a little bit strange, but so if you, well, you you could do something like this, you could push uh, test, and that would be fine because this is a 32-bit um, number basically, and that's allowed. But anything past that, like if we try to put a space there, it's going to error and say that invalid operand size, invalid uh, operand, and so it, it can be kind of confusing because you're thinking, wait, this is x64. Why can't I push? 64 bits um, and you actually can push 64 bits, but you can't do it directly with an immediate value. So um, the way that they refer to that is in the manuals is M6, M64. You can't push an M64, you can push an M32. Um, you can look it up, uh, you can look up the push instruction in the manual. Um, in fact, I'll just do it for you because why not? You got to get used to reading these manuals and they're not that hard. So here I'm, I'm reading AMD's manual, it's AMD 64. Um, this is volume three. So if you go to the push here, you can see here that we have available push register slash memory 16, push register slash memory 32, um, push register slash memory 64. And then you have um, push immediate eight, immediate 16, immediate 32, and assign extended 32 bit immediate value onto the stack. So the thing is, is that you can't push a full 64-bit integer onto the stack. And so what we do instead to uh, basically emulate that, let me get rid of that space there, is what you could do is just move the 64-bit immediate, because this is, this is really just a number. Um, this is like syntax, syntactic sugar for a number. So what FASM's doing here is it's taking a string and it is, it's writing it in reverse order as a number, which you're gonna see in a minute. And then we push that register because you can push a 64-bit register, you just can't push the 64-bit immediate value. And then, and then we do the same thing here. So the data ends up effectively going on the stack. It's just, it requires a couple more instructions. And then again, this move EDX15 is just the size. So then after that, we have to load the, um, again, the pointer to this T right here, okay? Um, it's, it's much like a C string, except it doesn't need to be null terminated in this case. And it turns out the pointer to this T right here is we're referencing it as RBP minus 16. Why are we doing that? Because what we did here is we, at the very beginning of this program, we took the stack pointer and we stored it in RBP. And then when we, when we conduct this push here, the stack pointer gets uh, subtracted by eight because eight is the size of the, um, you know, it's, it's the word size of the CPU, which also means that each stack slot is eight away from the other one. And so what we do is we, we put RBP minus 16 because that's where this T is right here. So the A in a test is going to be RBP minus eight, but we need to read the entire string, not just the test. So we push RBP minus 16 here because again, the stack pointer is actually, um, it's moving downwards as it goes up. It's moving down in memory as it goes up. And since we save the original stack pointer's location here, we're gonna go down 16 spots, uh, which is equivalent to two pushes. So I know that could be a little bit confusing. Um, and I'm gonna show you this right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up in a debugger. I'm gonna restart it. Um, I'm gonna move it up here just like this so you can see it. So you can see here, here's our move RBP RSP. So I'm gonna step through this so you can see what's going on, but already you can see here that we have two moves into RAX um, and 
the first move here is just a bunch of numbers, and then the second move is also a bunch of numbers. And these are just the ASCII codes for the text. So if we were to look here, we would see that, so this T right here is actually going to be the 74 right here. So if you go to the ASCII table on the internet, um, you'll see that a lowercase t is, is, a, is a 74 in um, hexadecimal. And so, and then the 68 is the H, the, the I is 69. In fact, you can even tell because H comes right before I, then we go 68, 69. So the, so the string is actually being parsed um, in reverse order due to little Indian, okay? And so it's it's a little bit confusing here because there's a, it's 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 kind of a mixed mash of stuff. So first of all, we're pushing the string, um, you know, sort of I guess, I guess you could say like phrase by phrase or or you know, eight bytes at a time in the reverse order, and then each segment of the string actually gets read in in the reverse order due to the Indianness. Okay. So if you're if you're hand coding the, these uh, bytes, you have to remember to actually write them in reverse order. But luckily, Phasm does that for us. Okay, so let's just go ahead and step through this. So we move the this value in RX. You can see one in RX, and then we push RX. So what I want you to do now is I want you to to watch what happens here. So this this is the top of the stack. Okay, now the interesting thing about the stack is is that it grows upwards visually okay like a like a stack of paper but it grows downwards in memory address so again another point of confusion because we go from you can see here that the the stack slots that are down farther deeper in the stack are actually growing in memory address we go 80 to 88 to 90 to 98 to a0 to a8 so, and again they're going they're going up in eight byte increments okay so that's very important so what I, I want you to watch what happens here, because this is the top of the stack. Watch, it's gonna be moved up when we do this push. And now we see our string attest. So again, uh, this debugger knows to read this string in reverse order. So it's parsing it as a test, even though um, it's stored in the, in the actual um, representation in reverse order. And we can see that because we see after the, the end of a test, we have two null bytes, okay? And you can see here that the null bytes are not on this side; they're on this side. So we're we're going or we're we're it's being parsed from right to left here. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and move the second in value into your rex. You can see it updated here, and then boom, there we go. This is a test. Now the reason why we have to push these in reverse order is going to become apparent now, because remember a string is read in forwards memory order. So the way that a string is interpreted is you give the, the CPU the address of the first character, which is this T right here. The first character in, in our case is the T here. And so um, we have to give that address. And then as it goes, as it goes down the stack, it's actually going up in memory address. And so since the, the CPU is going to read basically 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 78, 80, like that, um, it needs to be pushed in reverse order to logically be a string like this, okay? Now again, we actually don't need this null terminator, but it just so happens to be that we didn't fill up this entire um, register basically because, or this entire slot in, in the, in the uh, stack because our string just didn't happen to be that long, okay? But it, this syscall doesn't care about whether or not those zeros are there. So now um, we're going to go ahead and call the syscall. So you can see here, um, this is sort of like a like an S trace, basically. It's showing us what's being passed to the syscall. And you can see here that we're actually passing the right string. So it, it actually interpreted the string properly. Okay. And then um, we call program exit here. And then we're gonna close out. So now I'm just gonna run the program in the console so you can see just what happens. You can see it prints, this is a test. So that's gonna be all for this video today. Um, 
you know, if it was a little bit confusing, maybe rewatch it a little bit or play around with it and uh, you'll get it. But it's with Phasm, what's cool about it is it's as simple as just um, doing Phasm and then the name of your uh, assembly file. You, and then you just make sure that you put this format ELF64 executable up here when you're on Linux and, and declare your segment. All right. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.